Hey, y'all. CB here, and I'm the new BS welder here at NBS Welding. Top secret project. Rigging up some pumps. Just wanted to get you in here and, and show you what I got going on rigging up these pumps. These pumps are on a stainless steel frame, and what I've glued together here is a Schedule 80 CPVC setup. Uh, what we got here on the discharge, uh, we got a pressure relief valve here. Uh, check valve right here. Four-way cross, there'll be a pressure switch here. The discharge here. And our bladder tank, pressure tank right here. And then uh, suction systems, the larger size right here. Each end has got uh, cam lock fittings on it. And the company that will be using these pumps has the cam lock uh, fittings on hoses to rig this up. I'm going to be doing some wiring first. And I want to show you that. Second part of this is going to be some stainless steel fabrication with some stainless steel angle iron. We'll get the uh, we'll get the Art Captain MiG 205 MP out and and use its multi-process abilities with the plasma cutter and the welding. Uh, probably be uh, MiG welding with a solid stainless steel wire and an argon gas. But on the wiring, uh, could show you. Got the wires to the pump that needs to go to the pressure switch. And the wire that I've cut off, obviously, is just a 120 volt that you would plug in. And what you run into on these pumps that I've messed with, um, a lot of times you need a fitting like this to go onto your pressure switch. And... Uh, in a lot of cases, traditionally, the way these are done is you, you put the wire through here and smash it. I've had those come apart a lot or, or make a bad connection a lot. Uh, I'm not crazy about that setup. And you'll see what I've done here. Uh, I've pulled this off. And I'll be fluxing these and soldering them and heat shrinking the end. And when this is soldered to the wire, it's not going to come loose. I strip the wires and dip them in solder and flux. Get a pretty generous amount of that flux on the stripped end of the copper wire. And then I put the wire connector in place and crimp it a little bit. And it's uh, since it's going to be soldered, it only needs crimped enough to hold it in place while I solder it. Then I'm going to add the, add the solder, uh, put on the heat shrink tube, <clears throat> and uh, heat shrink that with a heat gun. You can heat shrink with your, with your soldering torch also. I tend to use my heat gun, and the reason I do is because the heat gun won't overdo it. If you use your soldering torch uh, to shrink your heat shrink, then you want to be careful because it will burn it if you overdo it. There's a bigger piece of heat shrink that I've got on the double wire and I'm shrinking it on there with the heat gun too. Um, there's a clamp uh, that I've put in place uh, that goes on the switch to hold the wires and there's a black plug that, that come with the switch that you see in the side towards you. And uh, you can see me installing this clamp right here. Uh, I've got, I decided to make it so that both wires go in and out of the same side. And it's the side that the wire uh, comes out of the pump on. You could make it so that it, one went in one side and one went in the other. But I didn't do it that way. I like it like this. So we're going to take a look at what we got here. Uh, all the connections are are made up. We we got the ground connected and all all four of the the wires that uh, are going to provide power and uh, the cover works back on there. So as far as wiring on this, I think we're looking good. 
Here on the next phase of the Dusons, we got to get done, get these pumps rigged up. You can see how this plumbing's a little bit weak. And it's going to have to be pretty rigid right there where you're connecting that hose. You can see what I got right here is your standard garden variety one and a half inch stainless steel angle. Uh, these frames are already kind of made up of a stainless steel angle, so this is matching it. I got out the Arc Captain MIG 205 MP. I've got some Arc Captain stainless MIG wire in here. I've ran this wire with pure argon and steel mix, and I like the mix gas better. Uh, you could use either one, whatever you got, it'll work. Uh, I like the, the, the mix gas better. Uh, the 205 MP is a great machine for what we're about to do because it has the plasma cutter. So we're hooked up to the air and we're hooked up to power. We are hooked up to our mixed gas for our MIG and we're ready to get rolling. Uh, first part on this is getting some of this angle cut. And a lot of people might see me do this and be like, hey man, why are you, why are you cutting the angle with the plasma? You got a saw right over there. Why wouldn't you be using the saw? Uh, in the case with stainless steel, when it comes to sawing it or drilling it, either one, if I can avoid it, I probably would. Uh, drilling and sawing stainless, it's just such a hard material. It is such a hard material. It's so hard on drill bits. It's so hard on saw blades. Um, I would use the plasma in this case. So what I'm noticing here when I get my first piece up, where I'm wanting to put my U-bolt to make this strong, uh, it, it didn't come out like I wanted it to right on the, the thick part of that end coupling. And the way I'm going about fixing it is I'm adding a coupling. So one of the questions that's come up with the 205 MP and a lot of people have mentioned it is uh, whether or not it's better to have the 205 MP or a separate plasma and welder. Well, what I'm doing right here in the case with the 205 MP is I'm switching it from using the plasma cutter like I just did to using the MIG welder. And that's all there is to it. So this is something y'all can consider. You still might be, you know, for your use, you might be better off having a separate plasma cutter and welder. But the thing I want to show you on this is the way the air goes in for your plasma and the way the uh, shield gas goes in for your MIG and the way the torch hooks up for the plasma and, and the way the gun hooks up for the MIG. If you're MIG welding or stick welding, either one, it is very, very easy to go from plasma to weld. The, the, the time with the MIG 205 MP that you would have more of a hassle going from welding to plasma cutting would be if you were going from TIG welding to plasma cutting. Uh, since the TIG ports use the same thing as the plasma port, uh, it's going to take you longer to go from TIG to plasma. Uh, I don't DC TIG much at all. Just about anything that most people would DC TIG, uh, I'm probably going to MIG weld it. So... It's not a big deal for me. This is a bender I'm showing you here that is actually normally used in a different way. But you see what I'm doing here, jamming this piece of three inch pipe in there. Uh, I'm making me some U-bolts because I couldn't buy U-bolts in the size that I needed for this tank. And uh, a little bit earlier in the video, I was getting my marks using a square and holding it up there. Uh, and on these U-bolts where they're going to go on this tank, I'm, I'm covering my U-bolt, the threaded rod, I'm covering it with a vinyl tubing to uh, serve as a softener. And to get that on there, I kind of had to thread it on there and I kind of had to do it in two separate pieces. You can see that separation there in the center. But this is going to uh, keep the keep it nice and, and, and provide like, it'll be a softener 
around that tank, uh, having that vinyl tubing on there. So I get this welded up, and you see I got it like I want it with the U-bolts because the U-bolt here is going over that super thick coupling, and then right underneath of the coupling, there's pipe, so that's really thick. And then up here, the U-bolt has got the vinyl tubing with a black heat shrink over top of it. And I think that's going to work real good. All of the MIG welding that I did with the Arc Captain MIG 205 MP and the Arc Captain stainless wire, uh, it went really well. I, I loved how I loved I love how that machine welds. Um, but it it did really good with the stainless too, and I'm really happy with the Arc Captain stainless solid MIG wire. All right, forgive me here, guys. Give me a minute. Let me do a little advertising for the channel. These are the NBS Welding T-shirts that we got for sale. You can get an NBS Welding T-shirt for $25 plus shipping. If you email Tina at nbswelding at aol.com, then uh, she'll get with you on what your shipping cost is going to be and, and get you a T-shirt. Now, in the description of my videos, there's links to our Amazon storefront. Uh, if you do anything with Amazon, use our link to get there, whether you're buying items on our storefront or just buying something else. Uh, it'll help the channel if you use my link. We also are an Art Captain affiliate, and the uh, links to the, to the Art Captain site is also in the description of my videos. So if you use our Art Captain link, then Art Captain will know you got there because of me. And if you buy anything from our captain, use the promo code NBSWelding5%. You'll get 5% off and the channel will get a little credit for that. I want to thank you all for your support now. Leave me a comment, like my videos, and uh, share them to anybody that you think would enjoy them. Thanks. For testing, we got a water tank set up with the water coming out just a... Uh, little bit higher in elevation than the pressure tank pretty short cycle on this pump setup with such a small bladder tank don't see anything leaking anywhere take a look at the switch this type of safety switch is designed to keep a house from flooding so it's got to have a little bit of back pressure from a fixture to, to stay on that's a 3050 so that pumps pumping that from 30 psi to 50 psi up in that bladder pretty quick But I think we're looking good here. I want to thank you all for watching and learn how to work with what you got. That way you always have everything you need.